I haven't earned the right uh, to assume, uh, to ask them for things like uh, money or commitment or co their personal contact information. We're in a different world here. Um, people don't gravitate to someone who just says, give me, give me, trust me, trust me. My marketing is reversed. I analyzed it in a different way. I said, "How do I, I'm a secret. How do I get myself into their sphere of influence? I give them grip. My content is better than what other people charge for. And I give them great stuff, even two to four minute videos, free consultations uh, on my web page. Um, I answer my own phone. And that's how I built up a million dollar business by introducing myself to people, earning their trust and gaining credibility. And then they in return um, said, yeah, Claude, I know what you're about. I've seen your video. I hear this every day. Um, I've, I've seen your videos. I've earned your, you know, I like your stuff. I wanted to talk to you about my real estate business or can you help me or should I buy your package? Should I take your mentoring or can you help me with this deal? And so well, Claude, it's, it's called people, virtual attraction. Claude, some people believe that if you give away all your best stuff, there's nothing to sell. Wrong. I have plenty more. If you give away quality stuff to people, they they will assume that you're holding back more or that you have even more or better content okay um i i respect i am so grateful i am so humbled by this great life these wonderful i love my clients i am so grateful to them they have given me and my wife a tremendous financial security peace of mind they've given us so much i will never take them for granted i have to earn their trust and respect Instead of just assuming, hi, um, you know, with these, you go to a web page and banners come across, or you're just saying, give me, give me, trust me, trust me. Sorry, there's too many people doing that, and some of them are not as conscientious as you and I. We have to earn it. So, so Claude, the natural question that I really had that I wanted to get to is, where did this come from? Like, did you, is it kind of trial and error you got to this point? How did you get to the point to where you believe in this particular sales philosophy? When I saw my wife, uh, when, when I was able to, when my wife was able to stay home with her kids, quit her job, and, I, the P, and then when I saw my bank account statement that grew from nothing to, uh, my, pro, my biggest problem is taxes right now. My problem is other people's dreams. <laughs> okay. And I, yeah. it, it just, it, I just saw that what I was doing was working because it was different from my competition. My mentor, Max, used to say this one. This will answer your question. Max used to say, if your competition's doing it, change. Don't do what all the other people are doing. Be original. Give people good value. It's not, what do you and I, what do you look for when you want to buy something? I, I want, so I have a big problem with people trying to nickel and dime me. Um, I have a big problem with like my bank that wants to charge me a $22 fee every single month because I have too many cash transactions. That's I have too many people depositing cash rent. And they want to charge me a twenty-two dollar fee. Do you think I want to keep doing business with that bank? For, I mean, like, well, how much money are you telling? Uh, are you getting ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand in your bank, and you're worried about twenty-two dollars? Then maybe your priorities are off. It's the it's it's it has nothing to do with the money. That's what, but that's that's the point I'm trying to make. It has nothing to do with the money. You ask me, you ask me what what I look for when I try to like, I want someone who's not going to try to nickel and dime me about every little thing. And if you give me a little bit of value up front, I'm going to want to take care of you and kind of pay a premium for you and your service because you have that mentality to want to take care of me and do things the right way. Um, my, my thing is, um, does my bank facilitate a lot of uh, me making a lot of money? Absolutely. Who do, what do I care if I spend $22, $22 a month and I have six figures in my checking account? Who cares? Don't, don't sweat, pardon the language, don't sweat the small shit. Yeah. It's the, it has nothing to do with the money for me. Like, like, like find us and join a credit, join a credit union. I started a credit union. Uh, I started a credit union, oh God, 35 years ago. It's still in effect. Credit unions are wonderful and they don't nickel and dime you if you keep a certain minimal balance in your account. Right. Like, 
Probably if you sauce. ask for barbecue sauce at, at McDonald's and they want to charge you 25 cents. Okay, bring my own then. Bring my own bottle. <laughs> but Chick-fil-A doesn't charge me for barbecue sauce. Okay. Then go to Chick-fil-A. I do. That's the point I'm trying to make. I do go to Chick-fil-A and that's one of the main reasons why I go. We have choices. We have choices in life. Okay, and sometimes those choices are about valuation. Okay, if bank, uh, if Wells Fargo does a better job and it charges me twenty five bucks a month, or I, my my merchant accounts, I have two merchant accounts, three actually, including PayPal. Uh, I have Wells Fargo, I have Bank of the West, and I have PayPal merchant account. I spend hundreds of dollars. I think we spend three, four, five hundred dollars a month on service fees and garbage like that. Oh. <laughs> but that's just the way a uh, majority of my clients want to pay that way, and that's the only way to do business. Do I like paying those fees? Of course not. But who cares? It's the cost of doing business. So, Claude, you asked the question, what do I look for, or what do you look for when you're trying to do business with somebody? What do, um, what do I look Is for? A, you, that's the question you asked me. What, what do I look for when I want to do business with someone? What's the answer to that question? What's the answer you hear most often? Put it in context for me. What do I look for? Uh, I look for value. I look for service. Uh, I look for accountability. Um, I look for decision maker. Um, you know, is this the person? Uh, is this the person I can do business with today? I'm a today guy. Um, on that, so I reverse engineer. What do my clients, prospective clients, want? Okay, I think they want somebody who goes on video, somebody who answers his phone. Directly, somebody returns phone calls. I think they want to be treated with respect and value. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. That's, that's all. You mentioned you mentioned something um, in what you wrote about gurus, like yes. not really like the typical gurus. Talk yeah. about that a little bit. Yeah, I think um, I think it's absurd. I think it's ridiculous. I'm I'm probably the only guy who says it. I won't mention any names or anything like that. I make a few exceptions. You're one of them. Because uh, I know the way you you and your wife do business. Um, there's a few, uh, you know, I like my buddy Joe McCall and a few other people because I know they're good guys, they're accountable, and they give people value. I think a lot of them, uh, they hire giant phone rooms of people to make phone calls. Uh, yes. They lend their name. They're very eloquent, charismatic speakers. Uh, if I try to call any of these people, I will not get them on the phone. They will not return a call for me. Yet they want a ghastly amounts of money. I have, a, I have a personal problem with that. Okay, I want accountability. Okay, if you want to mentor me or teach me a program or something, I want to talk to the guy who did it. I don't want to talk to a guy who's getting $20 an hour to answer a phone or some other ex-realtor who never made more than $50,000 a year teaching a class. I want accountability. I want value. Don't lend your name to stuff. Don't tell me how great you are and then, and then shoot and then take a lot of money from me and then hand me off to somebody else. It's okay to yeah. disagree with me. I know I tick off some people when I say it, but I believe we should not take these good, hardworking people. The, the, res, the results speak to themselves. I've done a lot of research. The failure rate in the educational business, in sales training, in real estate, and everything is dismal. It's in the high 90s. It's can you Because I talk to these people. A lot of the people who come to me have taken countless programs and have still not found are still not learning the, the most fundamental things about success in totally. business. Totally. And what's wrong with this system that has these people, I mean, uh, uh, join all these programs and gurus and things, that, and, and they're, still, um, they're still failing. What's wrong with that? It's you a know, big problem. My students succeed. Yeah. I did a, a meeting this morning. We spent the first 20 minutes listening to all the deals they did just last week. All the money. One guy made five, one made 10, one made 18,000. I'll send you the video if you want to talk to them or see them. Uh, my students make money if they, if they learn and apply and they're disciplined. That's, and that, that makes me, and that gives, that makes me look good because they're paying me, obviously, but it also makes me feel good that I'm giving them value. Totally. And it's just my, that's the way I roll, man. That's awesome. I love the way you roll, Claude. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming to Alabama, too. I really oh, do appreciate man, it. Oh, was, man, it was so great. You guys treated me so nice. You guys were so lovely to me, you know? It was really great. It was a super audience, real fun audience. And, and we're and growing, man. We're growing. We, we cracked over 200 for the first time last month. 
and we keep growing because I just feel like just try to keep giving value, keep bringing in great people like you. Um, you know, you helped me get Joe there, which was great. Yeah, jo uh, did, did, Joe's good. Joe's good. He's interesting. Joe has a different was, take on what's really good. Joe is a complete. Joe is Mister Automation. You know. <laughs> I always kid him. Yeah. I, I just talked with Joe a couple days ago. I said, Joe never met an application he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's but a, I'm very he, thankful for you. You're the first guy that kind of took a chance on us um, when we were just getting started. And I'm very thankful for you. And, oh, and for anything. What you how's, the fam it. how's the family? How's your lovely wife? Yeah. She's beautiful and she's awesome. We've got two little two little kids running around, three-year-old and one-year-old. And we're just trying to survive it. You know? So your house is always <laughs> quiet. It's all. <laughs> What's we cannot get. We can't keep the keep the thing clean. It's always cluttered stuff everywhere. But you know, let, that's let me, just the way it is. You will miss it someday. The kids are going to grow up. They're going to go on with their own lives. Go away to college. Get busy with their own families and everything. And you're going to. How come I never hear from the kids anymore? And you know, and it's really I, something. I, I will not miss stepping on Legos in the middle of the night. That's something I will not miss. You will miss it. You will miss all of it. You will. You. It's the best. I think it's some. I think it's one of the best parts of life is when the kids are small and you're doing all those fun things together. And I know they drive you crazy sometimes. And you step on Legos and they spill things and they and they act up in the car. But someday you're going to miss it. That's. I, I'm giving you something anyway. Um, let me shut off the recording.